So today I'm gonna to paint a little eight by eight cityscape and walk you through the process. I am working on Patreon Rewards today, which is where I send out paintings to patrons who've reached a certain level with their pledges. There's more details on my Patreon channel linked down below. Um, I've just touched up two, let me show you. Here's painting number one. This one is an eight by eight of North Beach in San Francisco. And next we have another eight by eight. This one here is a strawberry still life, obviously. Both of these are going to Alabama, so that's kind of interesting. Um, shout out to Alabama, thank you. Uh, but anyway, uh, I had another request from another patron who reached that mark who wanted uh, cityscapes. And I don't have any 8x8 cityscapes, so that's what I'm going to be working on today. So here's a look at the setup. I have got my computer in the background here, which has a cityscape image that I'm going to be working from. I am using my plein air easel, and, but I have a special set up here where I've got this frame that I made that allows me to use a square in case I need any straight lines, which obviously there are a lot of straight lines in cityscapes. A little more than a quarter inch of a gap here so that I can use this square without messing up the painting. I don't actually rely on this thing too much because if you do, it ends up making the painting look overworked or too careful. So what I'm going to be doing is focusing on big shapes as usual and then I may use my square to come in and put a few little lines just to kind of suggest the horizontal and the vertical but not overdo it. I start with burnt sienna just like I do when I'm plein air painting. I'm just kind of getting all the major things in place like the mountains here, the island, this Alcatraz right here. I'm squinting at the image and trying to break down things into just patterns of light and dark. Uh, like this would all be dark here. The road is all dark. And then it's kind of dark like this as well. This is all I really need to get started. I will come into these shapes and then break them up with little suggestions of buildings, but I'm not gonna, you know, start right off by like drawing each and every building. All right, now I'm gonna start painting in the street, which seems like value-wise, the street is a little bit lighter than the trees. I'm gonna go with sort of a mid-tone value for the shadows of the buildings. Buildings on this side maybe are a little bit darker. And the key is focus on the transition from dark to light. There's sort of some interesting, I'm not gonna get it exact, but I'm just, there's some interesting, uh, you know, shadow patterns. I'm using a fairly big brush, it's like a number eight bright, which is fairly big for a small panel like this. But I'm just interested in, you know, kind of blocking it in and getting everything laid out. That's my primary concern at this point. Now, the value of the water is fairly close to this, kind of close to a mid-tone. It's probably a little lighter than a mid-tone. The dark's on the island on Alcatraz. I'm gonna put those in right now to kind of give definition to the island, to Alcatraz, to the rock. Okay, there's more red in that. That's way too dark too. Too dark of a value. Way too dark still. The sky almost seems to be kind of a purple color. All right, so that's basically the breakdown of the scene. And now I can go in from here and kind of start making some tweaks. Like in the mountains, there are some shadows on the mountains. It looks like there's uh, the hill kind of goes up like this and there's shadows over here. So I might try putting some of those in. The value of the mountain in the background seems to be pretty good. 
but there are these little areas of, of blue. That's a little bit too much. And I might warm up these mountains a little bit with some, maybe that's a little bit too dark. Yeah, it's too dark. So I'm warming up these mountains with little touches of red. I mean, obviously it's a very grayed down red, but if you were to use yellow in the background, it could bring, uh, it would make the mountain come forward but red will warm things up, but it still allows me to keep the mountain off in the distance. At this point, I've got these trees too dark, so I'm gonna lighten them up. And I'm trying to use very, um, like I'm using deliberate strokes. All right, so for the buildings, I'm gonna use a little bit of Alizarin crimson and white and I can come back and punch these buildings up afterwards. And these trees definitely have some red in them. Actually, all the green out there has, you know, some... I'm using burnt sienna, basically. Okay, and there's some shadow shapes in uh, these, the white here, this white area, or the very light colored areas and buildings. So I'm just going to kind of suggest, um, you know, break it up, break this, this big, um, light colored shape here. I'm going to break it up with some of these shadow shapes. And I'm not, I'm not really going to worry about being too exact. I'm looking for an interesting pattern. That's that's my primary concern. Like this whole area here has really no dark shadows, but I kind of want to add some. All right, so I'm using just a mixture of yellow ochre and titanium white. That's it. It's kind of a warm, you know, warm white to go in here. And then it's going to pick up some of the burnt sienna as well from the, from the uh, drawing, which is fine. I don't want this line to be a straight line. I want it to suggest buildings. There's actually a boat out there. I'm going to leave that out. It's just too complicated. It's all about simplification. Okay, you can see right there, that is, I mean, I've done a little bit more detail in the top area here. Um, this area needs to, like these shapes need to just be broken up a little bit with little suggested areas of buildings. But what I don't want to do is I, I want to make sure that I keep this strong design. In other words, light, shadow, street, trees, that's it. I'm not looking at details or individual buildings. So now I can come in and do some, you know, some darker areas of like, you know, like buildings, suggesting buildings and stuff. Like for example, there's a building over here. And I'm just squinting, looking for areas of dark for now. Uh, I'm not looking at individual buildings. I'm just looking for within these shapes. I'm just looking for, okay, what are the darkest areas? And I can adjust the colors and whatnot if I want, but I 
And I'm not making these as dark as I'm actually seeing them because, like I said, I don't want to break up these shapes too much. I want to keep these, I want to keep this pattern. I don't want to break up this shape too much because that'll become distracting and then you'll lose the overall design. I am using Thalo, which is a warmer blue, so I'm going to put some touches of Thalo into these dark areas here. Oops, too light. So see, I've broken up that shape because that's too light, so we've got to darken that. Okay, up in this area here, there's some areas of almost pure yellow that I'm seeing. Again, I'm coming into this area up here with some variety of, you know, of warm colors. And I'm just using um, pure cadmium yellow, but it's mixing obviously with the colors that, it's, that are already on here, or with the white. And that yellow, those pops of yellow are going to, you know, play against these um, purplish blues to create a, a feeling of light. And I could use other warm colors. I could use other warm colors. I'm seeing some reds or rust colors in there too. So that's another color I can add if I want to. All right, so I'm reinforcing the darks. I've got a really dark green I've mixed up here, but now I'm coming in with some blue. Again, I'm trying to stay to the you know same value, but I'm kind of shifting the colors a little bit. And there are areas of the road that are, there's little bit, little shifts in here as well, like the, the distant area seems maybe a little bit lighter. And there's where the crosswalks are, maybe are a little bit lighter. And then some areas like in here are actually really quite dark. All right, so this is where you could come in with something like, you know, with this tool and maybe add just a few suggested lines but again you don't want to you don't want to overdo it if you want to to at a point like this you could add there's little cars so you could add um, little suggestions of cars you know, the reflections off of the hood of the cars or whatever. It's kind of a delicate balance trying to figure out, you know, how many little details you can add without losing the abstract design. Especially on a small panel like this, you could also add little things like windows can be nice suggestions too. Um, but again, keep them very... Um, You know, don't make them pop out. So they should be very delicately suggested. All right, so we'll finish this off with a series of photographs. So this is photo one. Pay attention to the shoreline of Alcatraz, how to the right it kind of turns up a bit. Um, that bothered me. Um, also, the buildings in the foreground to the left in particular in the shadow are a little bit messed up. <laughs> they need a little more refinement. Also, the shadows in the uh, in the sunlit area of buildings are too dark so I took care of that and also I warmed up the mountains in the distance um, so you can see there I fixed the shoreline on the island I warmed up the mountains 
All right, so I'm gonna recap the process here. First, you're gonna break down the scene into simple shapes, and then you are gonna go into those simple shapes and add some definition. Uh, but you do not wanna break up the simple shapes with too much definition. So what I'd recommend doing is, within those shapes, maybe go a value lighter and a value darker to add your details uh, or your or to define those shapes like to suggest buildings or cars or whatever so just a little bit lighter a little bit darker but you don't want to destroy the overall um, graphic design of the painting as i said these paintings are going off to patrons from patreon and there's a link to my patreon page in the description below if you want more information about that but as usual, thanks for hanging out, guys. Stay healthy, safe, and creative. And um, if you have any questions too, put them in the comments down below. And thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys in the next video.